So this is June, we've got uh, white clouds in the sky and the 4 kilowatt system is doing just over 1.1 kilowatts, 1.2 kilowatts now. Well, it's timed out, let me turn the screen back on. Oh, sun's come out. And there you can see the... Yeah, sun's completely out and it's actually spiked well over 4 kilowatts. That's because the panels have uh, cooled down a bit uh, while under the clouds. And you can see the clouds obviously covering the panels a bit. And again, sun's popped out again and it's spiked over 4 kilowatts again, 4.3 kilowatts. Yeah. Clouds must be <laughs> coming out again. So again, it's dropping down to the twos, two kilowatts, two and a half, around two kilowatts. So it's only at 50% now. And I guess the sun has come out again. Yep, 4.3 kilowatts it spiked to. So this is a four kilowatt system, but when the panels are running a bit cooler, they run a bit more efficient. So again the sun's popped behind a bit of cloud and it's dropped back down to two kilowatts. One and a half kilowatts now. So yeah, this is the type of uh, output you're going to see on uh, uh, summer's day when it's you've got some white cloud and blue sky, so you're going to get a lot of variation between one and four kilowatts. Again, the sun's out and the panels are probably uh, cooling down a bit now. So yeah, if the sun was out full, I think you're going to see 3.8 kilowatts, 3.7, and even less as the panels age and degrade or uh, get covered with a bit of moss. So yeah, the sun's back behind the cloud and it's back down to only 1.3 kilowatts. So this is a really good reason why you should always install uh, more than 4 kilowatts if you can. You should always try and install as much as you can fit on your roof and how much you can afford. So yeah, below it was down below 2 kilowatts again when the cloud came over and still spiking below 2 kilowatts when the clouds come over and this is well the time zone's wrong there so it's actually 20 past 12 uh, in mid-June so the sun's at the we're getting towards the longest days of the year this, you're going to get as much sun as the UK is ever going to get really in terms of hours in the height of the sun so in terms of t testing the system this is going to be your best power around June, July but really you're going to get good power between March and October oh yep yeah, sun's fully out I guess because we're spiking up to 4 kilowatts again but then you see as the panels warm up a bit when they're in sun the power is dropping back down to 3950 because so it's not a hot day today it's only 15 degrees but when the panels are in the sun they warm up and they lose efficiency so you can see dropping down to 3.94 I'm actually quite impressed I thought the now that the system is three, four years old, that I wouldn't be seeing uh, three or three point nine kilowatts again. Oh, you can see clouds uh, covering there. Again, and we're way down to one below one kilowatt now. Must be a big, thick bit of cloud coming over. So you can imagine now, if you have just turned your kettle on, you're trying to draw over three kilowatts of power and the system's doing less than one kilowatt so you're going to be pulling 2.1 from the grid this is uh, why it's always best to run all your appliances that are going to be heating water, your dishwasher, your washing machine uh, 
tumble dryers use a lot of power as well, kettles uh, during the day and charging electric cars especially if you don't have battery storage but of course if you had a 8 kilowatt system you would be doing twice this amount because this is only a 4 kilowatt system so if you had an 8 kilowatt system you'd be drawing from the grid far less than a 4 kilowatt when a cloud comes over and your appliances are using lots of power so yeah a thick cloud over the sun at the moment and we're you can see we've lost uh, th pretty much three quarters of our power we're down below one kilowatt and this is a four kilowatt system on a sunny day in June and we're cloud cover and we're below one kilowatt cloud must be have cleared just a little bit so it's just creeping over one kilowatt as you can see now uh, <coughs> you can go into the well some must be coming out we're spiking up towards four kilowatts again okay with this uh, system has got quite good menus on the screen so we can go in and have a look at the instant van values between the two strings so number of operating hours today 7.7 .7, so yeah it's 12.30 so it started uh, noticing the sun about just after 5 o'clock this morning but yeah as I said we are June so PV1 is the first string of seven panels and PV2 is the second string of seven panels so altogether 14 panels each rated at 285 watts 14 times 285 is uh, can't do the maths in my head but it's about four kilowatts what I've always thought was a bit curious is that PV2 is always slightly less power than PV1 but when I inquired about it I was told that the inverter overhead is drawn from PV2 which sounded like a bit of a we weird excuse but yeah PV2 is always been slightly less power than PV1 if I go back to that menu there's some more things I can talk about so what you actually see is that the voltage will stay the same most of the time and it's actually when the Sun goes in and out the ampage uh, reduces so each cell that's about 10 centimeters squared is half, about half a volt and then you have all of those in series so you end up with about 200 volts on each string and this is all DC and then so the top two lines are the DC and then what it's outputting is the AC so 250 volts 15 amps about 3.8 kilowatts so that 3.76 kilowatts is the same as we're seeing on the main screen here 3.7 kilowatts and again it's showing you the voltage of the grid and the voltage across the two panels <coughs> so that was a bit strange there's a 20 volt difference between the two strings uh, a minute ago but now they're back uh, showing the same hope that doesn't mean that one of the panels is a bit dodgy but uh, I'll have to monitor that but uh, that looks okay okay well I'll stop this video there